Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to D News Plus again today for episode three of three in our series on cockroaches. It's been pretty gross so far, but also, I have to say, pretty awesome. Uh, I'm Trace, by the way, host of this show. If you've never been to D News Plus before, we take a big topic, we break it down so everybody understands it better. Go back, watch the first two episodes of this series if you haven't so far, because otherwise you're not going to quite get it. Today, we're talking about what would happen in a world without cockroaches. I know that's a weird question, but we've all heard about how cockroaches would, you know, survive long after humans are gone in the case of nuclear war and whatever else. But we wanted to know if any of that was true and what would happen if we did manage to get rid of all the cockroaches. So first off, the surviving a nuclear war thing. The idea spread after Little Boy and Fat Man were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945, and reports came back that cockroaches were scurrying around, uh, you know, they were the only survivors of the blast, and they were in the ruins of cities, and, and so on and so forth. The anti-nuclear sentiment during the Cold War perpetuated this idea. To show people how dangerous nuclear weapons really were, they would say the only survivors were cockroaches. Although, I feel like nothing surviving a nuclear blast is actually scarier than cockroaches, but whatever. As you would expect, the Mythbusters jumped in to find the truth of this. They irradiated a bunch of cockroaches. I kind of feel bad. The team took the most common cockroach that humans interact with, maybe you remember that from earlier, the Blatella germanica, it's a German cockroach, and they subjected them to three varying levels of radioactive metals, cobalt-60 specifically. They started by exposing them to a thousand rads, or a thousand radon units of cobalt-60. To put it in perspective, that amount of radiation would kill a human in about 10 minutes. Then they amped up their exposure to another group, and they said, okay, this group of cockroaches, 10,000 rads. That's really bad. Then eventually they had another group, and they got 100,000 rads. The gamma rays of the atomic bomb, again, to put it in perspective, that was dropped on Hiroshima only emitted about 10,000 rads. So this is a lot of radiation. The results confirmed, again, by the Mythbusters, that cockroaches could survive a nuclear explosion. 30 days after being irradiated, half of the 1,000 rad group were still alive. That's something that would kill humans in 10 minutes. And when they exposed it to roaches, a month later they were still fine. 10% of the 10,000 rad group, they were also still alive, which is pretty insane. But none of the 100,000 group survived, which is not surprising. That's a lot of radiation. So there is an amount of radiation that will kill cockroaches, and it's surprisingly low, only 1,000 rads, because only half of the cockroaches survived. But there's also an upper amount that will kill pretty much all of the cockroaches. So the point is, why do they survive when humans would die, right? The reason is their bodies have slower cell reproduction cycles. You know, we are constantly replacing cells in our body all the time. Some cells only live a few days. Some cells live months or weeks. Their bodies, cockroaches, have slower division cycles. According to the University of California, Santa Barbara, their cells only really divide when they're going through their molting process, when they're growing a new exoskeleton. The dividing cells are believed to be way more sensitive to radiation, likely because DNA is being replicated, and if it's damaged, that damaged DNA will be passed on to any future cells, and it would be bad. So that's why humans are so susceptible to radiation, because we are constantly making cells. We're dividing all the time. Half of the roaches that died they, in that first group, they were probably just somewhere close to molting during the time that they were being irradiated. But that wasn't the only cockroach survival myth out there. We mentioned it earlier. Cockroaches can survive decapitation for weeks. And they aren't the only insect that can, actually. But as you might know, humans, we would have trouble if we were decapitated, you know? I mean, wouldn't be great. There's actually a Planet Money story, it's really great, that when they polled Americans and they found out that 4% of Americans answered that they had been decapitated when asked. It's really great. Planet Money's awesome. But anyway, why is it that cockroaches can survive? First off, for us, if we're decapitated, we would have a problem with blood loss and blood pressure dropping, and you know we wouldn't be able to breathe very well because you know our nose is on our face. So if we had a hole and it was just our neck, it would be real gurgly. Couldn't eat. You know, a bunch of different things. Basically, our heads are very important. But cockroaches, they don't work in the same way that we do. They don't have blood pressure like we do. According to physiologist and biochemist Joseph Kunkel at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, cockroaches don't have a network of blood vessels like humans. 
or tiny capillaries that you need a lot of blood pressure to push the blood through. They have an open circulatory system. There's much less pressure needed to keep them alive. So after their head is separated from their bodies, the neck just seals off, no uncontrollable bleeding. The cockroach is gonna be fine. Roaches don't breathe through their heads like we do. They breathe through little holes down the sides of their bodies called spiracles, where they draw air in that way. Then little tubes called tracheae send the oxygen to their organs and tissues. Cockroaches also are poikilotherms, or cold-blooded. They essentially need, like, no food in comparison to us. We need to eat constantly to maintain this body temperature. And cockroaches' nervous system activity isn't designed in the same way ours is. They have nerve ganglia located throughout their body, giving instructions. So when you have a decapitated cockroach, the thing that kills it isn't being decapitated necessarily. It will eventually die of thirst, which actually sounds horrifying. Running around with no head, being real thirsty. That sucks. Now, about that cockroach apocalypse, the cockro-apocalypse that I mentioned earlier. Why do we keep these things around? They're creepy and they're gross and they move weird and I don't like them, but they're important. Firstly, they are a huge food source for birds and insectivorous animals. They aren't a sole food source for any specific animal, so no animal would necessarily go extinct, maybe. I mean, there is this parasitic wasp that uses cockroach eggs to birth their young, and that one would most likely go extinct without the cockroaches. But I don't know if I necessarily care about them. What I do maybe care a little bit more about is according to a professor of entomology at North Carolina State University, the red cockaded woodpecker is super into cockroaches. Like 50% of their diet is just cockroaches. So maybe that woodpecker would go extinct. Because it's not like, oh man, there's no cockroaches around. I guess I'll go to the shop and you know pick up something else. Like if your food source disappears and you're an animal, you're living on instinct. Even a small amount means that now, if 5% of your food source disappears, you are 5% hungry for a long time until you evolve a new way to eat <laughs> and find food. So we might lose some animals, but there's no real way to tell. Other than that, we would probably lose some other species because when things break in the food chain, stuff gets real. I would say the other thing, but you know, we're trying to be family friendly. But lastly, I have to say, if we said somehow that all cockroaches were gone, you know, snap your fingers and they're all disappeared, their sudden disappearance would affect humanity. To explain that, I'm gonna to go to the professor and chair of the biology department of the University of Texas at Tyler and a world expert on cockroaches, Srini Kambampati. I hope I got that right. They said, quote, most cockroaches feed on decaying organic matter, which traps a lot of nitrogen. Cockroach feeding has the effect of releasing that nitrogen in their feces, which then gets into the soil and is used by plants. In other words, extinction of cockroaches would have a big impact on forest health and therefore indirectly on all species that live there. And let's be honest, if we somehow had a negative impact on all forests on the planet, that would affect everyone else, every other life form. I mean, through all the extinction events throughout all of the history of our planet, what the plants do has really been a big influencing factor over the rest of us. So if we somehow cut out this big part of the nitrogen cycle, which is cockroaches, that would affect us all. So we really need them around. And I bet you never thought you'd be like, okay, cockroach, I won't squash you today. Go back to the forest. Do your thing, man. But that's what you should be thinking. So earlier, we mentioned Mythbusters. It's an awesome show. I really like it. I'm trying to work my way through all of the episodes of Mythbusters and rewatch them all. The early seasons are super weird. You can actually do that too at home. There's a new app called Discovery Go. You can watch every episode of the Mythbusters and all your favorite Discovery shows. It is free. The link is in the description. It's actually really, really cool. So check it out and let me know what you think. Sometimes when you don't think about the world around you, you fall into the traps that other people set, just like roaches, right? Just like the roach motels. You gotta evolve so you can learn to avoid them. Roaches are gross. I think we can all agree they're nasty. <laughs> but if you just work from movies and your own instincts, you'd wanna kill them all. But hopefully, listening to DNews Plus, now you know that they are essential in nature and they're also pretty dang cool. They can survive without heads, they don't have blood pressure. I mean, that's just this episode. If you haven't checked out the other two episodes in this series, make sure you go back and do that. Also, if you don't subscribe to DNews Plus, make sure you do that. We love that you guys tweet at us and leave comments down below the video and tell us what you wanna know more about because then we can make more shows and we can all help each other out. 
So thanks so much for watching DNews Plus. I'm Trace, and we'll see you next time.